Welcome back to the Light Channel Denmark. And we have Brother Andy Roman and myself here today. Uh, it's Thanksgiving in the United States, and we're thankful for God, for what he's doing in our lives. And we're thankful to be here to be able to present uh, this all important topic. And we're going to be sharing some, some prophetic uh, information that is vital to our understanding of where we are in prophetic time, according to the Bible. So uh, before we begin, uh, let us offer up a word of prayer. And if you're able, kneel, and let's begin with the word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We're thankful for this day. We thank you for life, health, and strength. And as we contemplate uh, your goodness towards us and giving us uh, thy precious son to die for us, and as we contemplate uh, the eternal realities in which we're living in, we pray, Father, that you would be with us, open up our eyes, open up our ears of understanding, that we may uh, draw close to thee in, uh, in truth and in righteousness. So please bless, bless us, bless the hearers of thy word, and we thank thee, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so today's title is uh, the, en the Encyclical of the Pope, the, and we're going to be discussing the papacy and prophecy. So uh, we can start out with the, uh, the first slide. Okay, and we're going to be reading here uh, some statements uh, from the Spirit of Prophecy regarding uh, the Sunday Law and what's going to uh, what's leading up to that. So we're going to read this. The Sunday movement is now making its way in darkness. The leaders are concealing the true issue and many who unite in the movement do not themselves see whither the undercurrent, undercurrent is tending. That's from last day events, page 125. And I would like to just comment real briefly about this, about how People are uh, wanting the Sunday law in America, the, the, Protestant, uh, the Protestant churches, but I don't think they know, uh, like it says here from the last day events, where it's going, that this is going to cause uh, a death decree. It's going to cause all these things. I just don't see, uh, see the Protestant churches understanding just where it's going. Uh, do you have a, a comment you'd like to share on that? Brother Andy? It's not just, yes, it's not just the Protestant churches, uh, my brother Morgan. Unfortunately, this is a topic that too many Seventh-day Adventists are struggling to comprehend. And our failure, our failure to heed the warnings given to us in, in inspiration is causing us to take a position on the wrong side. There's two important points that are brought out in these statements. Uh, and of course, you just you're just touching on the first one. But the two points is that these Sunday laws are going to come through stealth. In other words, the, the true purpose and the true meaning is going to be mixed in with something else. And then if we keep reading some of these other statements, yes, the climate subject. I know a lot of people don't want to hear about the climate. But how can you not want to hear it when that's what the whole world is talking about? You can't escape that the climate crisis is the most existential threat coming to the universe. And it, I mean, we're getting here. Our president here in the United States has just made a statement at COP27 that the climate is a issue of national security. He just made that statement last week. What does that mean, national security? That means that he's going to put the full force of the United States behind this issue. And what... If we keep reading some of these statements, you're going to see that the climate discussion and the disasters will be given as the main reason for establishing the Sunday law. So, yes, those are the two issues. And if we don't understand this, we're going to find ourselves on the wrong side of history and the wrong side of the great controversy. OK, thank you, Brother Annie. Let's continue reading those statements then. There is a satanic force propelling the Sunday movement, but it is concealed. Even the men who are engaged in the work are themselves blinded to the results which follow their movement. It's from the Review and Herald, January 1st, 1889. They will point to calamities on land and sea, 
to the storms of wind, the floods, the earthquakes, the destruction by fire, as judgments indicating God's displeasure because Sunday is not sacredly observed. These calamities will increase more and more. One disaster will follow close upon the heels of another. That's from Signs of the Times, January 17, 1884. And here we read, It will be declared that men are offending God by the violation of the Sunday Sabbath, that this sin has brought calamities which will not cease until Sunday observance shall be strictly enforced and that those who present the claims of the fourth commandment, thus destroying reverence for Sunday, are troublers of the people, preventing their restoration to divine favor and temporal prosperity. It's from the Great Controversy, page 590. Yeah, these are some heavy quotes, Brother Andy. Uh, maybe you can uh, dig a little deeper for us. Yes, I mean, that is why so few realize the seriousness of the present crisis that we're seeing being developed. And that's why we can't ignore the, the climate agenda. We, we can't ignore it. And I, I realize that there's a, there's a debate even within Adventism that says, no, we don't need to look to globalism. We need to look to nationalism. We need to look to the Protestant churches. We need to look to the Christian right. They're the ones who are going to bring the Sunday law it's nationalism. It's not globalism. You can't you can't ignore globalism. When you when you uh, in fact, uh, what that argument? Yes, there's nothing. Uh, that doesn't mean that the Protestant churches in America are not going to be part of this part of this climate agenda. It doesn't mean that they're not going to have a part. But when you look at the mark of the beast, the mark of the beast has global implications. That's not just nationalistic. It says uh, Revelation 13 talks about how the second beast will cause the inhabitants of the earth yes my brothers and sisters that's globalism so we see part we see different aspects of uh, this debate and we have to realize that uh, uh, we have to take final events compare them to the book great controversy and then i think we have a, a better understanding of what is about to happen upon this world you know it goes to show it goes to show that uh, great controversy is actually uh, tells us and shows us that we are much closer to the end. When we take these statements, and they're not isolated statements, you know, we're not just isolating one passage. Read the context and all those things. Great Controversy is showing us that we are much closer than the end than uh, many people want to realize. And I just wanted to make a comment about uh, the Protestant churches, because most Protestant churches they believe that the fourth commandment is done away with and it doesn't really matter what day you worship on but when it comes down to it they're going to call not sunday not worshiping on sunday a sin which is a breaking of the commandment so i find that kind of uh hypocritical if you'd say because they're saying one thing now regarding the sabbath oh we don't need to keep the sabbath the sabbath is not binding the fourth commandment is done away but then they're going to turn around and say, if you're worshiping, if you're not worshiping on Sunday, that it's a sin. That's true. And, you know, uh, Brother Morgan, it's not just uh, the conservative right wing Protestant branch of Christianity that says that the law has been done away with. You know, even the other side of Christianity believes the same thing, too. You know, even the the more liberal branches of protestantism they still believe that sunday is a lord's day they still believe that uh, we just like, we just published uh, on the website that the new york times is calling for a return of the blue laws and who was the main mm -hmm. instigator and promoter in that article it was a female priest who's from the anglican church very liberal so here we have liberal christianities who believe in globalism that are calling for a return of blue laws so we, we see a mixture of both, we, nationalism, globalism. Look, at Pope, Rome doesn't care, you know, what, who they use. They're going to use everybody to help further a certain agenda. And I think Great Controversy tells us what that agenda is. Amen. Well, thank you, Brother A. Let's continue on with the uh, next slide here. Now, these are... Uh, this is a statement from uh, the Pope himself in his book, uh, Laudato Si. 
The urgent challenge to protect our common home includes a concern to bring the whole human family together to seek a sustainable and integral development for we know that things can change. And that's number 13 in his encyclical. And then we read in uh, the book of Revelation, and I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gather together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army, Revelation 19.19. 19. So uh, very interesting comments by uh, the Pope himself regarding uh, this, this push for the unity through this uh, climate change. So if you can go a little deeper here. Yeah, the, the climate encyclical, Adato C, I can just tell you, it's not just about clean water and clean air. No, this statement you just read straight out of his uh, encyclical says that in order to achieve the climate, you know, to preserve the climate and to save the climate, it says they have to bring the whole human family together into one. That's that's globalism. That's universalism. That's that's exactly what Revelation said was going to was going to take place. Revelation said, "I saw the beast." Well, who's that? We know who that is. And the kings of the earth, they all gathered together. He's making calls to come together. And it's not just the calls to come together, but he's also, as we will see later on, some of the other statements he makes, he's telling them that they have to pass laws that are going to that have teeth. And it, we need a global government. I mean, that's, that's my brothers and sisters, how can we ignore uh, this Vatican's effort to promote the Pope's encyclical on climate change as part of the criteria that we see in Bible prophecy. You can't just ignore that. And mm -hmm. specifically, the reason why we can't ignore it is because the same, as I'm sure we're going to see a little later on, this climate encyclical is calling for Sunday, Sunday, Sunday in order to preserve uh, the environment, the greatest threat. And all the kings, COP27, if you saw what happened last week, all the kings of the earth, statesmen, politicians, uh, religious leaders, they're all on board with this. So we, we just can't close our eyes and say that there's nothing in the pipeline. We don't see any events. We don't see nothing significant. No, my brothers, this is very significant. And uh, they, they're, they're going to do this. They're not going to stop and they're not going to slow down. Man. Thank you, Brother Andy. Next, uh, next statements from Revelation chapter 16. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Yes, and so, uh, Brother Morgan, we have to ask ourselves this question. We see clearly from, from the book of Revelation, uh, you, you, you got to keep in mind that John the Revelator did the best to describe these events. And we are the recipients of, of the blessings that he was able to reveal to us. And he says that it, the beast, the false prophet, the image, they're going to come together. They're going to do things together. They're going to work together. They're going to plan together. They're going to. What we haven't seen just yet is that miracle working power. Uh, they're embracing spiritualism. There's no question about it. Spiritualism is a very important component to, to all of this. And that's why they're bringing in all these, all the other non-Christian religions. You know, they're bringing uh, pantheism. They're bringing, they're having these interfaith, not just Christian worship services, they're interfaith, multi-faith, multi-religions. They're bringing the, the, the nature worships from the Amazon. They're bringing all those people together into one. And Revelation tells us clearly what you just read is that it's, there's power, a, a power, not just human power. There'll be a satanic power 
this these unclean frogs these are spirits there's going to be a, a demonic activity and demonic power that will be working to bring the people together into one body. Uh, we're yet to see some of these spiritualistic manifestations, but they're, they're starting and they're happening. And so God's people have a work to do. God's people have to not just understand what this is. We're supposed to warn people about this. And obviously we can have nothing to do with this movement. I'll tell you why, and we're probably not going to read it, but you can read in Revelation chapter 20. It says, And I saw the beast and the, the false prophets and the image. They were taken. And all those that received the mark, they were cast into the lake of fire. That's the end of this movement. That's why we can't have anything to do. We have to warn people and call people to come out of this. These are the two powers, the two sides that are developing right now. The whole world's coming together. We're seeing that. In COP27, we're seeing it in other forms, similar forms, the ecumenical form. We're seeing that because ecumenism is not just climate. Ecumenism is also uh, bring, trying to create a universal fraternity, a universal order, a new religion, a new global religion with a new global government. Revelation describes that. That's what the beast and the image is going to do. They're going to force the world into a false worship. And let me just conclude by saying this. Brothers and sisters, we're seeing, you know, remember the Hebrews in the days of Nebuchadnezzar, they saw the golden image starting to be constructed. They weren't told to worship it, but they saw the groundwork. They saw the, the, the construction of that image. Then they one day they saw the crowning act where they put the crown or whatever, the finishing touches. And then a little after that, the command went forth to worship that image we are seeing what stage are we in brother morgan brothers i think we're very close to that crowning act where it's it's i think god is waiting for his revenant people to get on the ball and to do our work before everything uh, breaks loose and brother andy I, I always thought when i read the the frogs why would it be like frogs why is that significant and I think of frogs are catch people, catch their prey with their tongues. You know, it reminds me of the deceptions uh, that are going through that everything is a lie. Everything is propagate, uh, propagated lies regarding climate change, regarding uh, all these different things that are going on in the world that are being uh, promoted as uh, catastrophes are all based upon uh, frog uh, on uh, lies, which reminds me of the frogs catching uh, catching their prey with the tongues. Yes, that's right. And you know what? The false prophet is supposed to be the the right the spokesperson, to be the mouthpiece of God, and they're supposed to speak God's word. But obviously, what what the churches are doing today what they're promoting, what they're preaching, what they're encouraging the people. Those, what's coming out of their lips and out of their mouths are not the instructions that God has given us to preach the everlasting gospel. They're, they've mm -hmm. changed the gospel, and they're preaching, I don't you name whatever other gospel. Paul says if they preach any of the gospel, then what we have preached, let them be accursed. That we are, a, are an angel from heaven. Don't receive it. Don't accept it. And we're seeing the climate gospel. We're seeing the rainbow gospel. We see the ecumenical gospel. We see the social gospel. We see every other gospel you can imagine except the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. So that, mm -hmm. I believe that's part of what the false prophet is. They're using that tongue to deceive and to lie. You know, we know who the beast is. We know who the image of the beast, the false prophets. It's all these other churches that claim to be speaking for God. You know, the daughters. And they're not uh, preaching the truth. They're not warning people about what is about to happen. They're not calling people to worship God, give glory to him. They're not calling people out of Babylon. They're not preparing people to receive the seal of the living God. And so that we see that line of distinction between the remnant people and all this, all this uh, mess, you know, this confusion, all this false system of worship and religion being built and created before us. And we have to be prophets. The prophetic mouth of God, Elijah, behold, I sent Elijah before the great day of the Lord. And as Elijah messengers that we are to represent, 
We're supposed to be giving a prophetic word, the truth, to counter all of this false worship. Amen, Brother Andy. And let's uh, let's look at some statements by the Pope again and go a little deeper into his words here. It is essential to devise stronger and more efficiently organized international institutions with functionaries who are appointed fairly by agreement among national governments and empowered to impose sanctions. My, that's number that 175. About, they're not talking about clean air and water there. We're talking about governments. We're talking about national government with the power to impose and to force some kinds of policies. Now, will it start out with maybe uh, clean air and water and some other carbon, you know, standards? Of course it will. But what do we read at the beginning? The Sunday law is making its way in darkness. And that's what's dangerous. Who's against clean air and water? Nobody's against that. Who's against a, as it says, as you read, a national uh, government empowered to impose sanctions over the whole world? Over And forget our national constitutions. Forget about the will of the people. Forget about uh, whatever laws that, you know, through much sacrifice, you know, we have been able to obtain in order to protect the civil and religious liberty. Forget about that. We need one central organization to impose. We got a problem with that. We're not against clean air and water. We're against this. We're against that. Re read the next statement, brother. I'm sorry that I, I kind of interrupted, but it, it's hard. It's hard to read these things. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I know. It definitely gets you uh, in a nerve, right? To manage the global economy, to revive economies hit by the crisis, to avoid any deterioration of the present crisis and the greater imbalances that would result, to bring about integral and timely disarmament, food security, and peace, to guarantee the protection of the environment and to regulate migration. For all this, there is urgent need of true world political authority. Revelation 13 yeah. says that the beast and the image will control not just the econ economic markets, the global markets on everything. That's what, that's what Revelation chapter 13 tells us. Uh, you can read in chapter 13, verse 16 and 17, it says, and he will cause us all, that's all the world, both small and great, rich and poor, bond and free, to receive the mark in their hand. And that no man can buy or sell. What, what did the Pope says to manage the global economy? You see, my brothers and sisters, you cannot have an, uh, you can't have this uh, worldwide national Sunday law. Now people say, but Brother Andy, there you go. You shouldn't be focusing on that. We need to focus on the United States. Well, listen. Uh, there was a brother, a pastor Henriquez from uh, Save to Serve. I think he said it best. He says that right now the decks are being stacked. Everything is, is being created. Everything is happening. The framework, the global framework to bring, to impose a, a worship upon the whole world, we're seeing it before our own eyes. And in order for Revelation 13 to come to pass, you have to manage the global, you have to have a framework that can manage the global economy. You need that. And that's what Revelation 13 says, that he has power that no man may buy or sell. And who is it? Will that be imposed on? You can read it in the same chapter. He causes the world. He causes all, every nation. You need to have that framework to, to have a fulfillment of Revelation 13, 16, and 17. We've never had that. It's never existed. Yes, uh, Rome did some things, but that, that wasn't around the whole world. The Pope traveled back in, you know, during the, during the Dark Ages, but he didn't, he didn't go, the Pope didn't travel all over the world. He didn't go to South America. He didn't go to Asia. He didn't go all over the world. It's only in this generation that, the world has become much smaller, and they have a system. 
They have a system. They have what is called a blueprint. Laudato Si doesn't just discuss, if you think it's just about climate, you, you're mistaken. Laudato Si is the blueprint because it has the Sunday provisions. It has enforcement of a law provision. And we're not just talking theories and conspiracies anymore. We're seeing it with our own eyes. And the sad part, Brother Morgan, is this document, this climate encyclical, was being pushed and promoted and emphasized upon all the world leaders at COP27. There was a huge Catholic presence there, and they were promoting this. They were promoting the Pope's video. They are promoting the Pope's agenda. We showed some images of where at the COP27, they had in the background images of, you know, the, the main uh, set there where they're filming and recording and having their meetings. You could see Laudato Si in the background. It was being pushed. It was being promoted. Rome is doing their job, my brothers and sisters. It's, it's happening. We as God's people have to be faithful. We have to be urgent in fulfilling our responsibility in this time of age. But it's coming to pass, and it's happening, and they're doing this. Yes, we need to be watchmen. We need to be doing our part because Rome is doing their part. And no one else is going to speak the, the everlasting gospel besides those who have been entrusted with the oracles of God for today. And that is us as a, as a remnant people. So thank you, Brother Andy. Let's go on to uh, more thoughts from the Pope. Because the enforcement of laws is at times inadequate due to corruption, Public pressure has to be exerted in order to bring about decisive political action. Society through non-governmental organizations and intermediate groups must put pressure on governments to develop more rigorous regulations, procedures, and controls. What's another word for regulations? Like... Come on, what's another word for regulations? Laws, Laws my brothers and sisters. Yeah. Go ahead, bro Brother Morgan the religious and government combination, the, the blending of the two together, which has been what our country has been opposed to, and the Pope is sure. just pushing it hard. So go sure. ahead, Brother Andy. Yeah, you know, that, that doesn't sound like a climate encyclical. There's a lot more in that. But yet that's, that's the Pope's message. That's the Pope's solution. And listen, my brothers, this is a so-called religious leader who's acting and speaking like a politician. It doesn't sound like a religious leader. Uh, let, let me tell you the way prophecy describes it. He's speaking as a dragon. Put pressure on governments. The laws are not adequate. They're inadequate. We have to put pressure on these people. We have to make them do things. My brothers and sisters, that's showing teeth. The law, that's the teeth. That's the sword. The law is a sword. And they want to enforce Catholic social policies and Catholic social doctrine. Do you think you think Laudato Si is, is a social? No, that's Catholic social doctrine. And they want to impose and enforce that through the sword. Are we paying attention to what's happening in our world? And this is a document that's been pushed again and again and again, not just the COP 26 and 27, but it's going to continue to World Economic Forum, United Nations. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I, I'm going to in this next the next couple of days, I'm going to show how the United Nations and the Vatican's policies about the about this climate and about uh, this world government. They're coming together in perfect alignment. They're preaching the same gospel. We're going to be seeing that. So it's serious, and we need to be paying attention. Thank you, Brother Andy. Yes, very serious. Okay, let's continue on. We go into more of the Pope and his words here. Sunday rest. On Sunday, our participation in the Eucharist has special importance. Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be a day which heals our relationships with God, 
with ourselves, with others, and with the world. Sunday is the day of the resurrection, the first day of the new creation, whose first fruits are the Lord's risen humanity, the pledge of the final transfiguration of all created reality. It also proclaims man's eternal rest in God. Wow. It, it sounds good, right? <laughs> Yeah. Well, the problem is, yes, man, man does need rest. Man does need to be in communion with his creator. Man must be in harmony, not just with his creator, but with his family and must be in tune with that. We didn't come here to this world by ourselves. And that's why God has given us a seventh day Sabbath. That's why the first angel's message is a call to embrace the seventh day Sabbath, the Sabbath of the Lord. It says, worship him that made the heavens, the earth and the sea. In the fountains of water. How do you worship the creator who made all this beautiful creation for us? Through the seventh day Sabbath. That's not the message they're presenting. Uh, this is, this is like I said, once again, the Pope's climate encyclical says Sunday, 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 three different times, calling it the true day of rest. And, you know, if it was just the Pope doing this, then we can say, well, it's just one person. But, you know, it's not just the Pope. Uh, Sunday has become the solution to bring peace and rest and to bring some kind of order from all of society's ills. The labor shortages, the pandemic, you know, the, they're even using the Russia-Ukraine war and the, and the interruption of the supply lines. And they're, they're saying Sunday, we need to get to this four day work week, all different kinds of things. The workers need time off. Uh, we need we need a, a climate Sunday for the environment. And here, don't 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 throw out that this is only a secular secular message. He's talking about the Eucharist here. He's talking about uh, hard Catholic doctrine, the change of God's law. And you know, it's the labor unions, politicians, it's the secular media. Everybody is talking about it. Everybody is pushing this. It's a call. This uh, Pope's encyclical on climate is a call for Sunday rest. And this call will only continue to intensify. And what are God's people going to do about this? Well, we've been told clearly that uh, we cannot sit quietly and just casually accept the situation. He says the watchmen have to lift up a standard in these last days that, that describes the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So, and she says, I hope, she says, she says, I hope that God's people will, uh, I don't have the statement, but I'm just paraphrasing. She says, I hope that God's people will do their duty. There must be a continuous war to defend the law of God, which is being trampled by this society. So yes, the whole world is calling for this. The whole world is looking for this. And this call will only continue to intensify. Yeah, and I find it interesting that he calls it the Jewish Sabbath. But in fact, it's man's Sabbath. And that was created in the creation before the Jews were even in existence. So Again, uh, there's some truth in his statement, but it's always mingled with uh, lies, right? And that's what makes it uh, part of Babylon. Yes. Amen. Yes. And okay, so let's continue on in uh, our journey through this presentation. <clears throat> Political institutions and various other social groups are also entrusted with helping to raise people's awareness so too is the church. All Christian communities have an important role to play in ecological education. I, I find it interesting, uh, Brother Andy, that Satan is using uh, the environment, God's creation, to bring about his, uh, his final deception. He's using this ecological uh, encyclical to bring about uh, Sunday law, uniting the whole world uh, to rest, which sounds great, right? If you're secular or if you're religious, hey, we all need rest. 
Yeah, he, it, it, this is a call for global unity and cooperation. It's a call for ecumenism. You know, the Pope's call for ecumenism is not just to the Christian communities. He's saying even atheists, even uh, the other earth uh, spiritualities, he's calling on everybody to come together into one universal global family. And then the problem is that to, to be part of this universal fraternity is that, you know, we have to just focus on the things that we can agree on. And the things that we don't agree on, the things that divide us, the past, that has to be put aside and ignored. Problem with that, my brother Morgan, is that God is not going to forget the past. God doesn't forget the sins of Babylon. Revelation 18, part of the reason why... The loud cry message will be given, Revelation 18, under the power of the latter rain. Part of the reason why we have the heart of the three angels' message, the second angel's message, says that Babylon has fallen, has fallen, has become the habitation of devils. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins. For her sins have reached unto, what have they reached? Unto heaven mm -hmm. and God has forgotten her iniquities? No, no, no. God has remembered her iniquities. God is not going to forget the past. He's not going to forget the lawlessness. He's not going to forget the change of his law. He's not going to change the breach and the the the, the reapplication of his moral law. He's not going to forget that. And so what we see in this climate encyclical, which is not climate, it's the blueprint for Revelation chapter 13. What we see in this document is a call, not just for global unity in economics, not just for world political authority to control uh, our systems, but also religious unity. It encourages all religions, all faiths. He says the churches, it's a call to the churches, including Protestantism, including the what we call you know, the conservative religious right. It includes them too, to come to work together with us. So we're advocate. What we see here is a call for global, political, and a religious structure with teeth to impose sanctions. Brother Morgan, if this is not a fulfillment of what we see in Revelation chapter 17, Revelation chapter 18, Revelation chapter 13, then you tell me, my brother, wh where is it? Yeah. We're in the last oh, days. No, Something's it's... happening in our world. And we have to so cool. we have to be able to identify world events, time the Bible prophecy, time to the great controversy, and then show the people where we are in history. If it doesn't apply to what we're seeing today, then somebody please tell me, what are we going to apply it to? The, the World Cup Soccer Federation? Who do we apply it to? I mean, who, who is fulfilling all of these uh, points in Bible prophecy? It points to one power. Yes, there's other components. Yes, there's other players. But the key player who's going to be above all this, it's not even the religious Christian right. There's somebody who's going to be above him, who's going to be calling all the shots, that the people are heeding and obeying and coming to respond to the call. And if a Jesuit Pope, I think, can fit that uh, characteristic where they use deceit, they work both sides, they'll say one thing to us in public and then they'll do something completely different. It's going to, uh, the goal is to do one thing, for Rome to be restored to that temporal power. Great Controversy says that's all Rome is waiting for, for this reestablishment of her power. And when it comes, she will strike and the world will learn too late what the intentions of Rome is. So mm -hmm. my brothers and sisters, we have a work to do. And I think what this should do is this should just motivate us to be even more earnest. How do we respond to this? Massive evangelism. Obviously prayer and repentance and uh, we seek for God to prepare us because God's going to pour out his Holy Spirit, the latter rain. When, when they implement this world political system and they shut us down, they take away our digital currency, 
they lock us down, they take away all our possessions and properties, and maybe in prison, maybe, maybe in a hole, maybe in the wilderness, in a cave somewhere. They think they have God's people silenced and blocked out and canceled. God will pour out the latter rain, and they will not be able to keep God's people quiet. So a lot of things are happening. We need to be getting ready for this final showdown that's about to happen in our generation. Praise the Lord. Huh? Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Solemn times we're living in. Okay, let's continue on with some uh, more quotes. And yeah, you know, this, here this, image here, this image, I think it's, it's a wake up call. It, it's, it's a wake up call for us. You remember uh, Matthew chapter 16, verse 3. Uh, Jesus said to his generation, he spoke to his, the church of his generation. He pled with the church of his generation to wake up. Well, he didn't just say wake up, but it was a wake up call. He said, hypocrites, you can discern the faces of the sky. In other words, you guys are experts at determining, deter, discerning weather patterns, but you can't discern the signs of the times. I wonder, I wonder, Brother Morgan, I wonder, to how many of us could these words be applied? Hypocrites. Right. You know, how many of us would these sobering words fall upon? God has raised us up as a nation for one purpose. God raised Israel up as a nation for one purpose, to announce that the Messiah was here. That was their mission. They were... So you remember the prophecies of Daniel 9, it says uh, 70 weeks are determined unto your people to make an end in a sin and to, to establish the, the, the Holy One, the Messiah. The Messiah was coming. You should receive him, accept him. That was their mission and job. And they couldn't get, they couldn't get that one job right. The whole Jewish economy, the temple and its services and the festivities and everything pointed to Christ. They had one job, and they failed miserably. You remember when the when the the wise men from the east came to Jerusalem? They said, "Where's the king? He was born. We saw his stars." And they said, "What are you talking about? We we don't know anything. What are you, what are you referring to?" They failed, my brothers and sisters, and that's why Jesus says, "How can you discern weather patterns, but you can't discern that your Messiah has come, and you you you're failing." You're failing to, to be able to, to point people to your Messiah. And I wonder, I wonder, maybe we shouldn't spend too much time on this. Maybe uh, it might, uh, people may not uh, may feel a little uncomfortable. Listen, Brother Morgan, I wonder how many of us know about everything in the world? How many of us today, and I'm talking about our brothers and sisters in the faith, I'm talking to our fellow Seventh-day Adventists, how many of us know about all the, the, the sports teams? and the championship games, and the fashions, and the movies, and the video games, and everything else, and the gossips, and the tabloids. We're smart when it comes to the things of the world. Of the world. But when it comes to the times in which you're living, the times and the seasons, the coming of Christ, prophecy being fulfilled, how many of us are repeating the same history of ancient Israel? So, brother, I think the reason why we wanted to add that in there is because things are happening, not little signs, not little vague little signs. God is writing on this generation, and he's telling us to get ready because it's all coming to pass. Do we know the signs of the times? They are pointing to unprecedented events, and we have to be uh, watching, praying. Jesus says, watch and pray. So we have to watch world events we have to pray but also occupy we have a work to do and may we be found doing this work when jesus comes amen let's uh continue on and next quotes from the book of education the present is a time of overwhelming interest to all living rulers and statesmen men who occupy positions of trust and authority thinking men and women of all classes have their attention fixed upon the events taking place about us. They are watching the strained, restless relations that exist among the nations. They observe the intensity that is taking possession of every earthly element, and they recognize 
that something great and decisive is about to take place, that the world is on the verge of a stupendous crisis. Boy, is it ever. Yes. Yes. The wor- what inspiration tells us, it tells us that the world is watching. Just like Nebuchadnezzar, he was laying, he was going to bed at night and he was thinking and wondering. And God revealed the thoughts of his mind and he revealed it to Daniel through this dream. He revealed and he gave the answer to what Nebuchadnezzar was dreaming about. And what, what we see here in this statement, we see, a, a, we see a, a, another fulfillment of this. The world is watching. The world is wondering. They want to know what is happening. This all means something. We have the answer. The Three Angels' message is, is a solution to the moral crisis and to prepare people for what is about to happen. All the heaven is watching. All the world is watching. Everyone's focused. What does it mean? We're supposed to tell people what all these things mean. And what they mean is that Jesus is coming. He's at the door. And we have to get ready. What are, what are the storms and the earthquakes and the tempests and the, the natural disasters and the man-made disasters? What do they point to? Those are the signs of Jesus coming. Those are the labor pains. You know, when a woman travaileth in pain, we know that an event is happening. And Jesus uses that example to show that the signs of the times will become more intense and more frequent to let people know that he is at the door. That's what we have to be pointing people at. Satan is going to, you know what Satan's trying to say? He says, no, the signs of the times of Christ coming. It's not that Jesus is coming. It's just we got to, we got to start using electrical cars. We use electrical cars. We, we switch over to, you know, this carbon neutral economy. Forget about the sign of the times. Forget it. This world's going to last forever. We're going to save this world. Oh, my brothers and sisters. Uh, the world is watching, and we have to we have to give an answer. We have to be able to explain to them from the Bible what is about to happen, and Jesus is coming. And I think I think we have to be like those shepherds and like those wise men from the east, you know, and, and even like the Greeks who came and said, "We want to see Jesus." They were aware of what was happening. So we, we cannot be found sleeping. We missed the boat this time, Brother Morgan. That's it. There's not going to be another chance. There's not going to be another generation that's going to save us. We're going, we're going to be on the outside. Yeah, that's right. This last ship is going through, right? It's, it's on its way out. So let's get on. Okay, let's continue on. Uh, we're going to read now from the Great Controversy. Satan determines to unite them in one body and thus strengthen his cause by sweeping all into the ranks of spiritualism. Papists, Protestants, and worldlings will alike accept the form of godliness without the power, and they will see in this union a grand movement for the conversion of the world and the ushering in of the long-expected millennium. And that just reminds me of the words of the Pope. Uh, when he was trying to uni- is trying to unite everybody, regardless of what your beliefs are. Yeah, and how can we as Adventists escape when when this was written? Think about this: the Protestants were not embracing Rome or the papacy. He wasn't even he wasn't even welcome in the United States uh, when this was written. The churches. The Christian churches were not embracing spiritualism. They weren't embracing embracing Hindus and and what what are the other Buddhism and Mother Earth spiritualism. They were not doing those things. In fact, nothing. The modern day ecumenical movement is a modern phenomenon. It, it didn't happen in Ellen White's day. So we're seeing a, a major fulfillment of prophecy. And how can we as Adventists just ignore this and say, no, we're just we're just mingling? No, my brothers and sisters, when you're organizing these events in behalf of the United uh, the World Council of Churches in the Vatican, when you're part of the planning committee where you have to prove the agenda, in the agenda, they're promoting Sunday, they're promoting spiritualism, they're exalting the papacy in a privileged position of leadership. 
when we're in the planning and the, the organization of these events, we're not mingling. You know, I could, I could mingle. If I go to, to visit other people and mingle, I'm not going to be part of the, the committee that's going to plan everything in that agenda. No, no, no. And, and so, unfortunately, Brother Morgan, I believe one of the reasons why we here in Adventism uh, don't don't focus on the on the liberal just with Pope. No, that's not the model we're looking for. Look at the religious right in America. Forget the Pope. You know why they're saying forget the Pope? Because they're meeting because they're in, they're in cahoots with the Pope. They're in cahoots with the this liberal uh, Christianity left wing uh, global Marxist philosophy. They're in cahoots with those things. Are they embracing, you don't see Adventists in America really, at least not in the church leadership, you don't see them embracing the, the you know, the conservative Christians. No, there, there's no, there's not much relationship there. But with this movement, oh, they're all in, in that movement. Rome knows how to, uh, to spin uh, her deception. Satan knows how to, to realign some things so that, Rome doesn't care how he, Satan has a multitude of temptations and he doesn't care which one you embrace. As long as you embrace his lies, we're still going to be lost. And, you know, I'll just look at whether it's alcohol, whether it's drugs or whether it's uh, immorality, sexual immorality. It doesn't matter what it is. If you embrace any of Satan's temptations, we're going to lose eternal life. And Satan also has laid out for us temptations. And uh, I think that this is part of the reason. We've been warned that this movement was going to take place. And instead of heeding the warning and warning others, we're right in the middle of all that. We've been warned that ecumenism would have a, a, a role in bringing the world together. It's coming to pass. It is by far one of the greatest signs that has been given to us that not just a great controversy has come to pass. Everything in great controversy, let me tell you, people want to, they want to uh, uh, try to pick the book apart and say that it's, it, it's, not in, it's not for our generation. It's got, listen, too many things have come to pass already. And it's just yeah. showing that uh, God has given us a revelation and we're to take that message and we're supposed to, shine light to the world in a world of darkness. And instead, it seems like we're hiding the light and we're embracing the darkness. No, my brothers and sisters, we have to, we're supposed to, in this time of great darkness and great wickedness, we're to be light. We're supposed to admit the light of the gospel of Christ so that men can also embrace that truth and be part of God's permanent people. Amen. Thank you, Brother Andy, for that commentary. Uh, let's continue on with the next statement. I think we have a photo to go with it as well. Yes. This is from The Great Controversy, page 588. Yeah, we, we read that one already, my brother. I think we just read that one. Yeah, uh, yeah. we did read that one. Let's go to the next one. It's, these records of the past clearly reveal the enmity of Rome toward the true Sabbath and its defenders and the means which she employs to honor the institution of her creating. The word of God teaches that these scenes are to be repeated as Papists and Protestants shall unite for the exaltation of the Sunday. And sure, they this are. And like you said, they're bringing in everybody else as well to yeah. Sunday dinners. That's it. Yes. This statement here from Great Controversy tells us what the ecumenical movement will lead us to. There's an end game. There's a purpose behind it. There's a reason why the Pope has his uh, encyclical on the universal fraternity called Fratelli Tutti. There's a reason for it. And if you read that statement, uh, there's three steps that are going to take place. First step is the churches are going to unite. That's what it says. The churches will unite. And they will begin to influence the state to form an image. And when they begin to influence that state, that image through the state, 
you will see the exaltation of Sunday. In other words, Brother Morgan, what this means, you cannot have a Sunday without the churches coming together. It's impossible. Because in order to have an image, you got to have the churches come together. And the churches are coming together. And it's ecumenism that's bringing all of this to pass. Yes, you want to talk about the image of the beast. But what about ecumenism? We can't ignore ecumenism. This statement is very clear on how all of this is going to start. The churches have to come together. They have to unite on the points of doctrine that are held in common. That's what the Pope's message is. Ignore the things that divide us. You know, you keep your your Sabbath day of rest, and, and I'll keep my Sunday day of rest, but, you know, we can still come together. No, we can't come together on that. Because, Brother Morgan, not only has God called me to keep the seventh-day Sabbath, he's called us as Adventists to proclaim that message to the world and to call on everyone to keep the seventh-day Sabbath. That's what the first angel's message is. It's a call that the world has to remember God's commandments, and we have to embrace the seal of the living God. And that's what ecumenism doesn't allow. And so what we see in this statement is that it's the ecumenical movement that is going to lead to the exaltation of Sunday. That's what she says. That's what the statement says, Great Controversy. It says that this movement, Great Controversy 455, she says it will lead to the exaltation of Sunday. And that's, we're seeing part of that, but obviously that will continue. That's, I'm sorry, that was Great Controversy uh, 578. It says they will unite for the exaltation of Sunday. It's going to continue to happen. We see the seeds, we see the talk, we see the discussions, we see this, the, the stack, the deck is being stacked against God's people. Because the media, secular media, the labor unions, civil and secular organizations, politicians, they're all on board. Yes, we, 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 what we have to see is the United States come into a much closer working relationship with the Vatican, and then it's all going to come to an end. That's, that's what we're waiting for. And, you know, let me just say this, and this may upset a lot of people. It's going to upset a lot of people. The last president we had, there was some antagonism against the against the papacy. There was some hard feelings. The president we have now, oh boy, he he's in love with the papacy. And whatever he says, we're going to do whatever he says. And in the Pope, our president's uh, Biden's statements at COP27 is an indication that he's ready to push Catholic social doctrine. He's willing. He, it's a national emergency for the United States, and they're ready to lend the full, uh, the financial backing, whatever, the strong arm of the state to uh, uplift and defend and support and impose uh, the uh, Catholic s- social doctrine on this whole climate agenda. We're seeing that happen. So that is a development for those of you who like to discuss current events the president we have now he is in he i mean it's like a it's like a a union they're like tied they're like tied to the hip almost and that's what we need to see we need to see america begin to take a little more aggressive role in dealing with a lot of the the things we see in our world thank you brother andy and let's uh continue on Uh, with another statement from the Great Controversy. When the leading churches of the United States, uniting upon such points of doctrine uh, doctrine as are held by them in common, shall influence the state to enforce their decrees and to sustain their institutions, then Protestant America will have formed an image of the Roman hierarchy, and the infliction of civil penalties upon dissenters will inevitably result. And you had mentioned that a little earlier about uh, the churches uniting on the doctrines which they hold in common. And so if you can if you want to talk a little bit more about that. So here, here's what we see. You know, yes, a lot of people talk about Sunday law. There's no question about it. A lot of people warn us against the Sunday law. 
you have a lot of uh, ministers and ministries that are, are following the Sunday law. But how many of them will actually talk about the leading churches coming together into one when we have our own leaders that are participating in those, those meetings and gatherings where they are coming together as one in a working policy, working relationship? Well, that's where a lot of the pastors are going to say, no, we're not going to talk about that. But you, you can't ignore it. It's all one of the same. It's the, lead, it's the churches that as they come together, that they will form the image of the beast. You got to have that. You got to have ecumenism. You can't have an image of the beast. You can't have exaltation of Sunday until the churches come together. That's why this uh, ecumenism is, is, is something that God's people should have nothing to do with. You know, when you go into these forums, you, you have to leave your distinctive beliefs behind. You have to leave it at the door. It's not allowed. It's not tolerated. Nobody wants to. Uh, nobody wants to hear that uh, their plans are leading to the to the image of the beast or to the mark of the beast. They don't want to hear that. They think that Sunday is going to bring the is is the greatest solution and will bring us into time of prosperity. When the reality is, it's going to bring this world to the greatest crisis we have ever seen. That's the message that we have. And that's why we have a work to do. Uh, we're living in a new era where, uh, and it's not just the churches now, it's, a, it's the spiritualism is part of this component. Spiritualism, will have, see, they don't have Bible truth. So where do they get their power from? Their power comes from beneath, from below, and that's, that's spiritualism. So yes, my brothers and sisters, the battle lines are being drawn. And men are, are, are getting onto either one party or the other. And the conflict is over God or Antichrist, whose side we're going to stay on. Amen. Well, let's hear from uh, the Pope one more time before we close out here. I ask God to prepare our hearts to encounter our brothers and sisters so that we may overcome our differences rooted in political thinking, language, culture, and religion. The church esteems the ways in which God works in other religions and rejects nothing of what is true and holy in these religions. Really? So the Pope is always, yeah, bringing it together for us here. You see, how, how do we participate in that kind of a forum where God doesn't reject anything? He doesn't reject idol worship. He doesn't reject uh, that, the, that the rocks and the earth have a spirit and there are brothers. He doesn't reject uh, witch doctors and witchcraft. You know, the only thing that the Pope rejects is fundamentalism. That's what needs to, to be removed from society. And what are the fundamental? Those who believe that, that God's word means exactly what it says. It's literal and we're to apply it and we're to follow it. That's the only part that the Rome will not embrace because those are the ones who are saying, come out of her, my people. <laughs> those are the ones who are declaring the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. But yes, what we see in these statements, we're taking from the Pope's encyclical on, on uh, the universal brotherhood, the Fratelli Tutti. Uh, the Pope is saying all of us are brothers and sisters in the eyes of God. There's no question we're all brothers, but listen, we have to recognize that sin has alienated us from the universal, from, does God have a family? Absolutely. And this is what I tell people, God in his love and mercy is not just offering us salvation. He doesn't just want to give you salvation. He's offering you a home in heaven, and he offers to you a family. We're part of a family. That's what the remnant church is. We're not alone. God gives us salvation. He puts us in, a, connects us with brothers and sisters, and together we're going home to heaven. But we got to realize that sin has alienated us from the family of God. You know, the prodigal son has to come home. The prodigal son has to, can't continue in that kind of condition and situation. And the problem with the Pope's message is that there's no call to repentance. There's no call to be changed or to be reconciled. 
when we accept the gospel of Christ, we are adopted back into the family, we're told in the Bible, Romans chapter 8, 15. But regrettably, Pope Francis, uh, his encyclical forbids this transformation. It forbids repentance. Oh, they're talking about repentance, but not, not a repentance from sin and apostasy and lawlessness. They're talking about an ecological conversion. You know, they're not, they're not even trying to save sinners anymore. They want to save seaweed. That's what they want to save. They don't want to save people. They want to save. That's, that's a new gospel. That's a new conversion. That's a new mission. Uh, Pope Francis tells us, don't evangelize the pagans in the Amazon. No, we have to learn from them. They have so much truth to show us. And it's not just the Amazon, but it's the philosophy, the animist, earth worshipers. According to Pope Francis and what you just read in his encyclical, uh, every religion is praiseworthy. And guess what? It includes atheism. That's praiseworthy. And we're all going to heaven. And his philosophy is, because we're all going to be united in heaven anyways, we're all going to go to heaven anyways, let's just be united here in this earth. And uh, brothers and sisters, that's that's goes so contrary to the gospel of Jesus Christ. He says he's Jesus Christ, representative Jesus Christ. Well, did you know, and I'll close with this, I know uh, there's a lot more that can be said. Well, I'll just say this, when it comes to the universal fraternal uh, brotherhood that Pope Francis is trying to establish, he forgets that Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man goes to the Father but by me. That's not tolerant. That's not ecumenical. That doesn't embrace... Uh, and Buddha, Muhammad, Mother Earth, and all the other gods and idols. Jesus says, you want to get to heaven, you want to get to the Father, it's not by any, there, there are no other ways. I'm the only way. But see, that's not the message that is being presented today. And that's why God's people, instead of embracing this foolishness, we're supposed to be a light, and it's our duty to emit light and to shine light in these dark places so that people can see the glorious truth. They can see Christ and his beauty. They can see his gospel, his everlasting gospel, which includes a complete restoration so that we are restored back with God in the garden, man on the Sabbath, man with his perfect righteousness, with his, God's perfect righteousness and perfect communion. That's the communion we're preparing for. Amen, Brother Andy. Um, we have one more, uh, one more slide, though. We want to go over this because this is hopeful and uh, really want to address this as we, uh, as we contemplate uh, heaven and eternal realities is very, uh, very encouraging as we read this from the word of God. For he looketh, looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God, Hebrews 11.10. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. But ye have come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are written in heaven. Hebrews 12, 22 and 23. I want my name to be written in heaven. I'm sure everyone else Amen. who's listening to this does as well. Amen. Amen. You know, my brothers and sisters, and it's a beautiful, glorious thought that when God created this world, this earth, it wasn't something new. It was only an extension of his beautiful kingdom, the beautiful home. And his kingdom has a foundation. We don't, we don't need another foundation. We don't need these foundations that people are trying to build this new world order upon. God has a foundation, and that foundation is his law, his character. 
And that's why in this kingdom made new, it says in Isaiah 66, it says, from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come and worship before me. There's only one, there's only one creator that we worship in this kingdom. There's not many lords, you know, and people who want to pass themselves off as though they, they can change the law of God. They can reinterpret the gospel of Jesus Christ. They can, they can change the way we're going to get into heaven. No, my brothers and sisters. Uh, God is getting ready to build, bring and to restore this kingdom. And there's only one way. And that is for us to become citizens of that. That's, that's what the remnant church is, is all about. You know, the remnant church it describes that they have the white, their robes white. They have a work to do. They're accomplishing that. They have a gospel to, to present to the world, which is, which is in complete contradiction to antithesis of what we hear today in this world. And when we embrace God's call, when we embrace his message, when we proclaim that, when we participate in his work, we become members of this kingdom. He's coming home. He's coming to take us home. He's coming again. And uh, are we getting ready? Are we getting ready? Out of the ashes of what we see today, you know, yes, they're going to establish this, and they think it's going to bring peace and prosperity. It's only going to bring the greatest crisis. They're gathering the whole world together for the great battle of God, God Almighty. And it's a great time of trouble is going to come as a result of this, these efforts and this planning. And we're told by God's grace that it's during this time that we will be delivered. So it is my prayer and desire that we can be getting ready, that we become citizens of this kingdom, that we can be in harmony with the principles and policies of God's kingdom. And there's only one way. It's going to be through the blood of the Lamb that's going to wash us and purify us and make us ready to meet him in the clouds of glory. Amen, Brother Andy. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. It was a real blessing to be able to bring this presentation uh, to the people. And um, we should close out with a word of prayer. Um, and would you like to pray for us then, Brother Andy? Absolutely, my brothers and sisters. Let us pray. Oh, loving Father, what a joy and a privilege to be alive in this generation. We're going to see you come, Lord, if we're faithful. It's all coming to pass. Everything that you have said has surely come to pass. When we watch the news, Lord, when we watch events in this world, they remind us that you told us that all these things would come to pass. And you've also encouraged us that as we see these things, we are to look up for our salvation is coming very soon. Father, that is where our hope is. That is where we get uh, our source of encouragement is from your word and your soon coming. There's no nation that we're going to be able to escape to. There's no place we'll be able to hide. Our salvation and our deliverance will come when you come in the clouds of glory. You're coming for a church. You're coming for people who you know and who, people who know you. Lord, may we learn how to establish that living connection with you today. May we be, may we truly abide in the vine, which is you, your son, so that we can bear the fruit, so that when you come, you come for that precious fruit to take it back with you. Lord, may we not miss out on what is happening and what is about to happen. May we participate in the closing of your work. May we share this gospel and spread the seed so that when Latterine comes, we can see that wonderful harvest of souls that you will gather. Yes, the beast is doing his business and he's fulfilling his work. May we as your people also accomplish the work that you've committed to us. We thank you and we ask all these blessings be with our, my brother Morgan, be with those who are watching. Keep us safe and keep us close to your side is our prayer in these days ahead. Amen. Amen, Brother Andy. Uh, thank you, uh, everybody, for joining us here at Light Channel uh, Denmark. And we appreciate Brother Andy and we look forward to uh, our next program with him.
So thank you and God bless everybody. Thank you.